Okay, welcome to the over overview of Maya Star 4.3. Um, I'm going to go over the, the changes and what's been added uh, to Maya Star. Um, basically, what's been added to Maya Star is four avatar meshes that are specifically designed and rigged so that you can transfer the weights from, from them to your mesh clothing. There's two for fitted mesh and two for avatars that are rigged to the the normal bones are the M bones um, that are not fitted mesh um, and um, and I've added uh, some stuff to the um, to the menu so let's go uh, to the Maya Star menu and I'll tear it off and not a lot has changed um, the only really thing that I've added was this new section right here avatars for weight transferring so if we open that up and I'm going to tear it off so it stays open um, Here's the, the, the different avatars, you know, for fitted mesh avatars, here's one and two, one for female, one for male, and then not fitted mesh avatars rigged to the M bones slash normal bones. That's the same as normal bones select. Those are the bones that are selected when you click there. And so here's the third and the fourth avatar. And then I, I have a group of tools down here that I think you'll use quite often um, when, you're, when you're using um, the avatars for transferring the weights. Um, let's see, so let's activate Maya Star, and that will bring in everything. We already started with our mesh clothing in the scene, and the mesh clothing is not rigged. Okay, now you'll notice over here we have our layers menu, and we have, um, here are the, the new avatars. So there's two different ways you can get the avatars to appear. You can either click on here in the layers and hide the original. Uh, avatar or you can just click over here and we have our new avatar uh, let's see I'm gonna hide this is my my mesh dress that I'm using for this video I'm gonna hide it so we can just see the avatar okay so this avatar here is specifically designed to transfer the weights over um, it's been rigged this is the female uh, fitted mesh avatar uh, there's a male version, and then there's a female regular uh, rigged to the M bones, and then a male rigged to the M bones. And as you notice, when you click on these, it automatically changes and selects the avatar and hides uh, hides the um, the real avatar, uh, Linden Labs avatar, and it hides the skeleton when you click on these over here. So it's really a lot easier and faster to switch using this. Plus, you're probably going to have this open anyway. So of the tools. So um, let's see, the thing about this avatar is that the vertices, it has a lot more vertices than the default avatar. The default avatar uh, being this one has about a little over 3600 uh, vertices. The, um, the avatar is made to, to transfer the weight, or not meant to be uploaded to Second Life. They're specifically designed to transfer the weights onto your mesh clothing and I made it with a lot more vertices. There's over 15,000 vertices. They're a lot closer together. They're a lot more evenly spaced than the, than the default avatar uh, provided by Linden Lab. So, um, so I did that on purpose uh, to try to get the weights to transfer as smoothly and as evenly as possible. Um, and, um, and I also made it, if you've watched the sneak preview videos, you'll have seen that uh, the uh, avatars for weight training, they're not really a bodysuit or a wetsuit in the traditional sense where the clothes sits on top of the body. I purposely made the avatar, um, the, the transfer weight avatars, to be as close to the um, avatar's real shape as possible um, so that when you're mesh clothing, when you're wearing mesh clothing, that there's little or no poke through. And I think it will actually end up transferring the weights maybe a little bit better. Um, um, than if it was sitting on top of the skin. Um, but it shouldn't have made that much difference. Um, but I just figured it'd probably be, you know, since that's what we want to transfer the weights from, um, might be a good idea. So it's just something I'm trying to see if it will actually help improve. I hope it will help and improve the, the weight transfer. So um, so let's bring back the, the mesh dress and so that you can see 
it fits the avatar. Okay, so there's several ways you can transfer the weights um, over. Um, you can, my favorite way, and the way I suggest, I suggest most people at least try, um, and I think it works the best over traditionally over copying the weights, um, is, um, or using the copy weights feature, is a feature that not a lot of people know about. Um, it's been around since Maya 2. Point, I mean Maya 7.0, um, which is called substitute geometry, and it actually does exactly that. It substitutes this geometry of the dress uh, for the the mesh avatar, and um, it keeps the skin cluster for the mesh avatar. Um, so it actually is just substituting. So the name won't change. It will actually the name of the dress will change to uh, female fitted mesh. Um, you have to keep that in mind if you're going to be using substitute geometry that the name of your mesh clothing will change because we're just substituting the mesh clothing uh, for the for the uh, geometry of the mesh avatar. So it's going to keep the mesh avatar name. That's something you got to remember. Um, the other thing uh, to remember is I find that the substitute geometry works much better on the meter size avatar. Uh, what we're looking at here right now is a centimeter uh, scale avatar. So the first thing you want to do is uh, make your avatar the meter scale. And you notice that it gets huge. It's a hundred times larger. Those are the feet. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to click on our, our mesh clothing again and we're going to scale it up. Um, start off with scales set at one, one, and one and we're going to scale it up. You want to set the pivot point to right in the middle of the grid right there so that it, when, when it scales up it will scale up properly. Um, and you click on uh, the first scale X, hold down the shift key to select the scale Z and you can enter all three at the same time and then hit enter. Okay, And you'll notice that um, it fits the avatar. If we didn't put our um, our scaling point to the center of the grid, it wouldn't have scaled up and fit the avatar perfectly like that. Um, let's see, one thing to, to note that even though the avatar's scale is set at one, it was it was one when it was meter size or centimeter size, when it was smaller. Um, it was still one, one, and one. Um, so even when we go to meter scale and it makes it bigger, it's still a scale of one and one. Uh, that's because it's not changing the scale of the avatar mesh, uh, polygon mesh itself. It's because when we turn it from centimeter to meter, a, uh, a locator is created and the M pelvis bone is uh, parented to the locator. And the locator then goes from um, a scale of 1, 1, and 1, to, and it's scaled up to 100. So that's very important. So that the scale of your mesh clothing, if you're going to be using substitute geometry, has to be the same scale as um, as the, the locator here that the end pelvis bone is parented to. That's very important. If you don't have that, um, it won't work right. Um, what will happen is if you had your um, scale, say you did freeze transformation and you had your scale set at 1, 1, and 1 and you went to substitute geometry, the mesh clothing itself, even though it's really huge now, because um, this, this is the meter scale, you know, there's the little grid down there, um, it would scale up a hundred times. It would get really huge. Um, so, but I'm just going to control Z so we get back to 1, 1, and, or uh, 100, 100, 100. Okay, it's really super simple. All you have to do is select the mesh avatar and then hold down the shift key and make sure that you just click on your mesh clothing. Uh, another way to do it is in the outliner. Select the mesh outliner in the, uh, the mesh avatar in the outliner. And this is the fitted mesh uh, female avatar. And then hold down the control key and then click on your mesh clothing. Okay, so uh, we're going to do substitute geometry and I just click on Substitute Geometry and the only setting you really need to, to play with 
is uh, is this one. Uh, I, I use a, a reweighting distance tolerance of 0 .001. Um, you can play with these other settings. I usually never turn that one on, but I've played with these others, and you can try it if you really want to. Uh, retain old geometry, I believe, creates a copy of the old geometry named as it is now, which is dress, um, so that if you make a mistake, you, you can always have your old geometry. So anyway, so, so all you have to do is after you select the mesh avatar in your mesh clothing, is click Substitute Geometry. And it, it does a calculation, and um, it takes a few seconds, or, and it's done. And the avatar disappears because we've actually substituted the mesh the the dress the the mesh dress geometry. We sub substituted that for the um, avatar mesh. That's why it disappeared. And you'll notice that the dress is now named female fitted mesh. And if you come down here and hide it. That's why it disappears. Okay, and now we can bring back the real avatar. Okay, and now it's fully rigged. Um, we can come in here to animations and uh, click female walk and play. And you can see that it's fully rigged. The pokes through you're seeing some of it up here is simply because the avatar is so huge and the camera has to be so far away in order to actually see it. Maya has a little bit trouble calculating uh, the distance between the skin and the um, uh, the avatar and the skin of the mesh clothing, but you can see it really doesn't have that much poke through. And we can um, hit pause and uh, go to bind pose, and you can see it really has no poke through. Um, okay, and if we open up the appearance editor and we come here to torso and we can make the breast size bigger and you see it's fully rigged. Okay, um, let's see. A couple other things that I've added um, that will be more important if you're going to do, uh, I'll do another video specifically designed, I've come up with a system of body types and this works, is specifically designed for, um, um, for fitted mesh. Um, I guess you could use it for regular rigged mesh as well if you really wanted to instead of using the five standard sizes. I don't think that it, I don't think the body types would work as well for the fives as well as the five standard sizes for regular mesh. So the five um, so the body types are for the um, fitted mesh. And like I said, I'm going to go into another video on how that works. But I have added a new tab called body types, and there's three different types of, of bodies. There's uh, the waif, and as you can see it changes changes shape, and that it actually fairly fits the avatar fairly well, uh, just from the default rigging without even adjusting any weights. Um, hourglass probably is like 80 or 90 percent of the people in Second Life have what I call an hourglass figure. You know, larger breasts, but not humongously large. Um, uh, a very small waist, and good good size hips, you know, a classic hourglass shape. Um, we do get some poke through here, um, but that's mainly. Um, but you can see how well the uh, the mesh changes shape to to fit. Um, the um, let's see. Of course, this poke through if you were wearing an alpha underneath wouldn't even be showing. Uh, and then we have voluptuous. Now voluptuous is that the breasts are the largest as they can be, the, the butt is as big as it can be, and the hips are as big as they can be. Or not as big as they can be, but good size saddlebag to give a really curvy curvy. So this is what's called a voluptuous body. Um, and um, we can go back to the default. Okay. And like I said, I'm going to do another video where we're going to actually use the auto mesh resizing to create three body type fitted mesh uh, dresses. You're basically all using the same, pretty close to the same weight, so it's minimal weight adjustment between the three types, um, and that the auto mesh resizing does most of the work for you to get the other shapes. Like I said, I'm going to be doing another video that goes into this specifically and how to do it. So um, 
Um, so, okay, so that's um, pretty much it. I'm going to do another video uh, specifically to, well, I'll show you a little bit. Um, um, let's see. You'll notice a couple of things. Uh, if you're doing a skirt or a dress, you have to make sure that you have enough geometry between the legs. Starting about uh, about halfway th from the thigh, you know, the middle of the leg or thigh, um, or maybe slightly inward, um, and having a lot more uh, geometry in between the legs. Uh, you definitely need that um, so that when we adjust the weights here, we have enough geometry so that you don't get poked through on on the legs, especially down near the hem, uh, the hemline, because you can usually hide anything with an alpha, but if it's poking through at the hemline, you can't hide that with an alpha. So, um, um, so I'm going to go back to bind pose, and I will show you real quick how easy it is to adjust, like say the breastbone. Um, so, first thing you're going to do is come here to torso. Increase the breast size to 100%, and which these don't actually don't look that bad, you know. But sometimes, uh, if you ha sometimes this middle area, if you have a dress that has a lot of geometry here in the middle, it can kind of get messed up. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit of adjustment. I, I think these breasts could be a little bit bigger, or not bigger, <laughs> better. Um, if you look at X-ray, uh, here's a little bit of a gap in between the two. And so say we wanted to make them a little bit tighter, um, a little bit more form-fitting, and say the smoothest area in between a little bit. Um, and so what we can do is, I'll show you. Um, let me move this out of the way. Let me move this out of the way. Move that out of the way. Okay, so um, it's always a good idea especially if you're using substitute geometry. I'm going to put this back to the, the mesh default, is to detach skin with history. And the reason that we do that is that not all the tools work really well uh, with substitute geometry when you're adjusting. The, the, paint, the paint weights tool works just fine. I actually like using um, a combination of painting the weights, but sometimes you can only get so far with painting the weights. Um, and you need to move a vertice just a little bit, or a group of vertices. And so that's where um, the Sculpt Geometry tool comes in really handy. You can use the Sculpt Geometry tool even on mesh clothing that is rigged. Um, so that's awesome. Um, you can use the smoothing tool, you can use the pull, the push um, tool in the Sculpt Geometry tool. And, and it makes um, adjusting your, the, the vertices a lot easier and faster using the Sculpt Geometry tool. Um, and um, But if you're using the Substitute Geometry, um, until you detach with history, the Sculpt Geometry tool does not work. Um, and nor can you manually select a vertice and move it if you don't detach skin with history. So we're going to detach the skin with history, and I'll show you what that does. So we just click here, and you'll notice that the, the mesh clothing got smaller. It instantly went shrunk. That's because the scale of the mesh clothing went down back to one, one, and one, because that's what the original avatar mesh was set to. If we had detached the avatar mesh that we had copied, that we used in the substitute geometry, um, it would have shrunk down the same. So all you have to do is click on the first one, click on the second one, holding down the shift key, or the bottom one, the Z scale, enter in 100 and hit enter, and it comes back. It's that easy. You don't even have to think about I mean, there's nothing you really have to adjust or anything like that. So after we get the scale back to 100, uh, what you want to do is in Maya Star, you want to click Collision Bone Select, Normal Bone Select, because the skin cluster for the fitted mesh avatar has all the bones in the skin cluster already. And um, and some of the vertices have are not only rigged to just the collision bones, but are also rigged a little bit to the normal bones. I had to do that in order to get the, the avatar 
to, to, to change shape as close as possible to the original avatar shape. Um, um, I can't remember, oh, it's one of my customers who had, I think it was Sloan, um, suggested trying that, and it, and it actually did work. Now, about 98% of the weight of the vertices are on all the collision bones, and only a little bit is on the normal bones or the M bones. And so, um, and it works, and I've tested it, thoroughly tested it in Second Life. It doesn't cause a problem or anything like that. So, um, so also by having the collision bones and the normal bones already in the skin cluster, you don't have to add, worry about adding bones to the skin cluster before you export out as a DAE file. So that's another benefit, is it cuts that out, it cuts that step out completely. So, okay, so we had our avatar mesh clothing selected, click normal collision bone select, normal bone select, which selects the end bones, um, um, and then you click smooth bind skin, and you use the normal settings, you know, always use selected joints, uh, I always use the combined method of closest distance, maximum infl influence that I ever use is three. Um, you do not want maintain max influence turned on, I never have that turned on, you do not want that turned on. Um, I have a drop-off rate of 7, and I colorize a skeleton, and the other thing you must make sure you do not have turned on is removed unused influences, because um, there's going to be some things that aren't going to be influenced on here, like say the M head bone, or, this, or the head bone will not be an influence on this mesh dress, so therefore it would be removed if you were to do this, so you do not want that turned on, and you just click bind skin, and, oh, and this is a good, this is a very good thing that happened. It came up with an error. It says, you know, the, it was bound at a different, po at a different pose. So, easy, lady easy, easy, easy to fix. All you have to do is click, go to bind pose. You know, just click go to bind pose once or twice. And now, do the same thing again. Select the mesh clothing, collision bone select, normal bone select. Smooth bind skin. I'll bring that back over here. You have those settings, and you click bind skin. It's that simple. Okay, so now we have, and all the weights come back because we detached with history. All the weights come back that they were like they were before. Um, so that our our mesh moves and it because it saved the skin cluster. When you detach with history, it keeps the skin cluster. Um, even though it's no longer rigged to the skeleton. Okay, so now on to the painting the weights for the, the breast area. So all you have to do is click on Paint Skin Weights Tool. Um, I have mine set by hierarchy. Let me move this out of the way. Um, so that the collision bones are all on top and the M bones are all on the bottom. The M bones are the normal bones. Okay, so we want the left and right pecs. So we want the left pack, and you have it set on smooth, and you got to remember the number of times you click. So we're going to click it once, twice, and we're starting to get a little poke through. So that looks pretty good. We're going to click on the right side once, twice, and we're getting a little poke through like this. So this would be hidden by an alpha, so if you don't want to worry about it, you don't have to. If you want to come in here and and do some weight painting, you can. Um, I use a Wacom pen tablet. I just picked up my pen tablet now. So um, I'm now using a pen tablet. Uh, so I set it to replace, set it to maximum setting, and very light, feather-like strokes. Um, and I like that one. So I'm going to increase the brush size. You know, make sure that... I click up here in this little blank area just to make sure that this window is activated so that when I hold down the B key, I can make my brush a little bit bigger. So you can just sit there, and if you want to really get rid of, of, um, oops, of the poke through, you really can by just doing a little bit of paint weight. a little 
little bit here. Oh, it's a little bit too much. Control D. Really make this smaller. A little bit feather light. A little touch. Uh, increase here a little bit. Here a little bit. Whoops, I liked it too much. Okay, so that's how easy, you know, you can you can paint weight um, with just some minor adjustments. Whoops. Uh, let's see. Not the pack. See, the window isn't activated. So if I were to hit the B key, it, it would probably jump down to belly. So I click here to activate it. See how it turns blue? So now when I hold down the B key, I can I can adjust the the size again. Like I said, with this a little bit of weight painting, um, you can get rid of the poke through. Okay. And maybe a little bit up here. Say maybe over here. And we've just adjusted our weights. There we go. Okay, and we have some poke through over here as well, but we're not going to do that by doing the left. Um, so say you have some poke through that you just can't quite get the, um, you just can't quite get it fixed with um, weight painting. Uh, what you can do is go into the vertex mode, and you could select a vertice and go to the move tool, and you could move it like that, um, or you could. This is where the sculpt geometry tool comes in and I like to pull, and you can either do it by the normals or by the view. View means it will pull it directly towards the camera. N normals means it will follow the normal ma the normal map. And it's going to pull it, and I'm doing very light strokes, and you see it's pulling it out just a little bit. So that's another way if you have, if you just can't quite get something um, with, um, by adjusting the weights, you know, you could use the sculpt geometry tool to make very small adjustments um, to it. You know, so that it's not, you know, like I said, this would all be co covered up by an alpha anyway. Like I said, that's because of the camera. And so, um, so if we go to walk now, you can see it's fully rigged. Uh, the reason we're having some poke through back here is um, there's always a compromise between how well does something um, move and how well does it change size. Um, but you can still come in here and go to the paint uh, skin weights tool and come here to the upper back and um, you could increase the, the, the amount of weight of the upper back in this area so that it, it moves maybe a little bit better. Or a little, you know, and each, me each piece of mesh clothing might be slightly different. Now, if you find that you're doing this a lot, what you can do is you can, um, um, if you find that you're doing this a lot, where you're, you're um, paint weighting and adding this to the back, you can always edit the, um, the avatar mesh, the, I mean, the transfer weight avatars. You can always paint those simply after you p change the paint weighting. Um, I would suggest having nothing don't have any clothes or anything in the scene. Uh, what you'd what you'd do is you would you would start with a new scene, activate Maya Star, make the adjustments, uh, paint weight to the to the avatars over here, and then go File, Save Scene As, and you go 
to um, to your documents. Uh, Maya, my well, let's see, mine's 8.0 because that's the version the version of your Maya scripts, and you would replace Maya Star MB, and that way when you import activate Maya Star, you'll have the the weights you'll have saved the weights that you've adjusted. So if you do find um, that you're always painting the back, you can edit edit it so that you don't have to. You can edit these avatars over here, so, um, so that you don't have to constantly do that. Um, and um, so, but now we see that we're getting very little poke through. I could play around with this a bit more, and just to make sure um, that there's no poke through. But you can see how very quickly you can have your your stuff rigged. I'm going to do another video. Like I said, I'm going to do another video to show how I rig. Uh, skirts and dresses but that's basically it um, so that's the new Maya Star 4.3 uh, <laughs> um, and I hope it's going to make things go a lot easier and a lot faster um, for everybody as far as rigging is concerned um, so awesome okay what well, we will see you in the next video thanks